My name is Wilhelmina Nett. I was born and raised in Connecticut. I graduated from Yale University. The year, not important. After getting my master's degree at NYU in international relations, I started working my way up the ladder to the job of my dreams, United States Ambassador to the United Nations. But not every C student from Yale rises to the top. I found myself marred in the malaise of middle management bureaucracy. I was placed in protocol, which is like the toy department of foreign affairs. I would handle such matters, such as assuring the German chancellor's dog was walked daily, or that the prince of Japan was given a karaoke bar. In short, my career was a bit unfulfilled. In fact, it could be said my contributions in the field of worldwide diplomacy had been a joke. Willy-nilly, I was referred to by my colleagues with feeble minds and heartless hearts. But you know, all experiences have a purpose. Their constant mocking sealed me for the moment when my great career break would avail itself to me, quite by accident, to appreciate how serendipitous this opportunity was. You'd have to understand that through all my many important assignments, most of which had to do with entreating a many mid-level dignitary to the finest food and drink, even though I hardly spoke any foreign language. I mean, I could spit out a sliver of German and maybe a skosh of Japanese. It dawned on me, food and drink was a kind of international language in of itself. And upon that revelation, that one day, while idly sitting next to the Secretary General of the United Nations, while having lunch, you see, it was the day after Thanksgiving, and I had unexpectedly been asked by the U.S. ambassador to come along when his wife decided instead to go shopping on Black Friday. The Secretary General turned to me and asked, Well, Hamina, you've been in foreign relations for some time. What do you think the U.N. could do to contribute to world peace? what it was, or why I was able to respond as I did. I hadn't really given it much thought, not really. But to this question, the great question they ask Miss America all the time, I responded, you know what I do? I invite the world, indeed, every country on the face of this planet to a meal. And maybe even during Thanksgiving. And I would call it the World Buffet. And at this World Buffet, every country would bring a dish. And everyone who attended would sit and try each other's food. And then we'd enjoy each other's company. And through that, through the merriment of sharing each other's food and drink, we would then commence and talk about how to solve the problems of the world. Now, all I really cared about was that I sounded something other than the C student from Yale that I had been. I looked at my boss, the ambassador, and through his astonished gaze, I knew I had surprised him, maybe even slightly elated him. For through some incredible strike of good fortune, I'd managed not to embarrass him in front of the Secretary General. That's all that was on my mind. But to my astonishment, not only did the Secretary General comment that I responded in eloquent fashion, he said it was the most amazing idea he'd ever heard his entire career in foreign affairs. Can you imagine the most amazing idea he'd ever heard? I hit the mother load completely out of nowhere. I'd come upon the opportunity of a lifetime. So enthralled with the idea of the world buffet was the Secretary General that he ordered that a committee be immediately established and that I 
chair of that committee. And further, that to this committee would be other members of other ambassador staffs, to which he would make a point to personally speak to a number of ambassadors himself. After the lunch, I asked my friends, the U.S. ambassador, whether the Secretary General offer was for real, to which I was assured that it was. What do I do now? I asked. He told me two things. One, go ahead and plan the world buffet. And two, don't f it up. <laughs> I assured the ambassador I would pursue the former and certainly avoid the latter. And not to worry, I would make him proud. The world buffet. This was going to be my time. We're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Malcolm Boydman. This is my co-host, Jackie Douglas. We bring you the news that you don't want to hear, but it's true. Beware, America. This just in. The United Nations has announced a new initiative. They say that they're planning a food court. A committee is being formed to establish the first ever... World Buffet. World Buffet. Doesn't that get you thinking? Hmm? Where every country will be invited to bring their favorite food. Really? What would the United Nations be doing sponsoring a food festival? It's got to be the prelude to something nefarious. So we'll all be mesmerized by this seemingly innocent get-together while the New World Order plot their takeover. And just see it now that they're gonna, they're gonna plant tiny receptors in the wasabi of the sushi, drop psychoactive hallucinatory drugs into the Colombian coffee, and before you know it, they'll be infecting every world leader with their brainwashing techniques. You heard it here first. And folks, this committee is being formed in your U.S. Ambassador's Office to the United Nations. And we got the name of the leader of this gang. Her name is Wilhelmina Nilly. And this Wilhelmina Nilly, I'll bet my reputation on it, is a trained, planted CIA operative experienced in covert operations. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Mara. Oh, it's great. Thank you. I have your aspro. Willie, do you know the directions say you should not take more than two pills every six hours and no more than 12 pills in a day? Mm-hmm. Well, you take at least two every three hours and maybe 14 to 16 pills a day. And your point is? Well, I think I need to get more pills. Oh, there you go. The first one. Oh, Mara, if you don't mind, if you could call me Wilhelmina from now on. It's just that, well, my position has to have a bit of decorum. Sure. Uh, Willie, when I talk to you, do I call you Willie or do I call you Wilhelmina? Well, Mara, when we're talking like this, you can call me Willie. Because it's just us. But when we're with others, if you could call me Wilhelmina. Okay. You look concerned. Well, Willie, I think you know, so that I don't get mixed up, it might be easier if I just call you Wilhelmina all the time from now on. That way, I won't sleep up. What do you think? I think that's a great idea, Mara. Thank you for thinking about what's best. Hey there, Wilhelmina Nilly, chair of the World Food Festival on? No. Wilhelmina Nilly, leader of the greatest event in the history of the world. Wilhelmina! This is Victor Conk. Victor, this is a Willie Nilly. How do you do, Willie? Nice to meet you. So you're the head of what you call? I'm the chair of the World Buffet Committees. The World Buffet. <laughs> uh, what office are you in? 
Office. Oh, Willie, I'm not a member of the committee. I'm the photographer. Photographer? Yeah. Mara put out an ad on Paul's list. Oh, the photographer. Oh, I see. You're here to take pictures. Yes. Oh, well, what shall we do? Well, we should get a shot of you for posterity. I mean, this is historic, right? You better believe it. Okay, but where shall I stand? How about over there? Okay, ready? Wait, wait. Do you have any tips as to how I should look? Well, let's try a number of different emotions. Let me see serious. Okay, one, two, three. Great. Okay, Willie, how about happy? Willie, how about what I'm doing is great for mankind? That's great. So, Victor, you can just relax in the meeting room while we wait for the committee members to arrive, okay? You got it, Willie. Oh, and Victor, uh, Mara didn't exactly give you my right name. It really is Wilhelmina. Willie's just my casual name. I use it within my inner circle. So I'd appreciate it if when the committee members arrive, if you can refer to me as Wilhelmina. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it is my name. I'm not putting you off or anything, just... Oh, no, no. Totally understand. Excellent. Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina. What I'm doing is visualizing something that sounds like your name that I can associate with you. Wilhelmina sounds like willow, like the willow tree. And the word me. And the negative response of nah, like nah, I'm good. You know, like if someone offered me a beer, but I'm the designated driver. So I'd go, me, nah, I'm good. So we'll owe me now. There, got it all locked in. That's fascinating. Yeah, I learned it from some memory tapes I got from a friend. It works. So you got nothing to worry about, Willie. I got your back. Will you meet Nelly? Yes. Hi, oh, Michael Al-Sadi of the Egyptian State Department. Yes, Michael. Welcome aboard. Oh, thank you. <laughs> What? Huh? Uh, you said, welcome aboard. You see, my English is not how you say 100%, but isn't that how you Americans say, let's go sailing? Oh, well, yes, that's true. It's also a phrase uh, we use to s describe how you say, welcome to the team. Oh, the team. Yes, it means welcome to the group. The group. Yes, or the family. The family, yes. Thank you. I knew what Wilhelmina was talking about. You see, my father was the Egyptian ambassador to the United Nations. So I was quite versed in the vernacular of American colloquialism, which I mastered through my years of staking out late night bars during my graduate work at Boston University. Not only did I know welcome aboard, I also knew when the going gets tough, the tough get going, it is what it is. And I don't think we're in Kansas anymore, Toto. It was tactical, you see. I have found that it is always beneficial to establish that there is a possibility that you might have unintentionally misinterpreted the English language. It's a good ace in the hole, as they say, for when you have to weasel out of things. <laughs> More people, Wilhelmina? Yes, yes, thank you, Mara. Uh, Wilhelmina, when I heard about your idea, I just felt very, um, how do you say, you have the constant tension in the world, the problems in the Middle East, you have the North Koreans and their obsession with nuclear weapons, and you have the two Chinas always at opposite ends. I just felt yes, very... Uh, you were just overwhelmed. <laughs> Not really. Well, Amina, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't meet you yet. Oh. Michael, this is Mara. 
I'm Mara Stewart. Oh, Martha Stewart. Yes, personal assistant. Nice to meet you, Martha Stewart. No, Mara Stewart. Martha. No, Mara. Mara. No. Mara. Mara. No, not Mara. No. Just Mara. Oh, just Mara. I just wanted to see how far I could go, but I realized if I didn't stop, I'd just be going, Martha? Mara? And she'd be like, no, it's Mara. That first day, somehow it was all about names. I really feel bad that I'd called Willy Willy, even though she's always gone by Willy, and I've always called her Willy. So, I don't think it was such a big mistake to call her Willy. But I feel like I let Willie down. Honestly, I couldn't believe that I couldn't remember to call Willie Wilhelmina. How hard is that? But then I realized that, hey, I'm not the only one. Michael is a really smart person, but even he couldn't pronounce my name. Mara. <laughs> I mean, if he thought he had trouble with Mara Stewart, my Americanized married name. Imagine what he'd do with Yao Wei Yao Yao. True on that one. I'm Wilhelmina Nilly, chairman of the World Buffet Committee. Nice to meet you. Um, I am Sophie. Sophie Trudeau. Mm. Sophie and Ida. <laughs> hey, we're off to a good start. She hasn't forgotten our name. That accent. Idaho? Idaho? Does Idaho sound anything like a sun man? No, honey. I'm from the great state of Florida. Ah, yes, Florida. Forgive me. I don't know why I said Idaho. Actually, I don't even know what an Idaho accent sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> you must be the member for France. Oui. Where in France? Oh, mon dieu. <laughs> must we go there? I mean, you can tell the difference between a state that grows potatoes and one that is home to Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I mean, uh, what would it matter where I come from in France? <sighs> okay, if we must, uh, do you know Paris? Yes, of course. Well, I don't live there. <laughs> That's funny. Qu'est-ce que c'est funny? Uh, you say, do I know Paris? Oui. And I say, yes, of course. Oui. And you say, you don't live there. Oui, I don't live there. <laughs> so where do you live? Do you know Versailles? Yes, I visited there. Magnificent. The hall of mirrors, the gardens. Wait, oui. you don't live there. Oui, I am the queen of France, don't you know? <laughs> of course not. That is a palace. Well, I know that. Where do you live? I live southeast of Versailles in a small town called Arbejean. You know? Not really. Not really. Qu'est-ce que c'est, uh, not really? It means, uh, how you say, maybe. Maybe? Yes. You see, uh, the Americans, they're not the total in-your-face Americans of the past, no. Not really is more like the Japanese yes. Do you know the Japanese yes? Ah, uh, oui. <laughs> which is to say what? Which is to say that when the, the Japanese say oui, mm -hmm. they often mean no. Oh, so why don't they just say no? Oh, that would force the receiver of no to lose face. Ah, hi, I'm Ida Sawyer from Florida. Michael Al-Sadeh of Egypt. Sophie Trudeau. Abajon, France. <laughs> so, Sophie, have you gotten your answer yet? Answer? I've forgotten the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wilhelmina's interjection of not really is really her polite way of saying that she's never been to your backwater town of Abajon and hopes she never does. <laughs> I'm just bullshitting you. <laughs> bullshit! <laughs> oh, it's an extension of cow shit, honey. Oh, I know what bullshit is. 
But I work for the government, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. Hey, uh, is it me or is it warm in here? No, it is a little warm. Uh, Mara, can you check on the AC, please? Maybe it needs to be turned down a bit. Uh, why don't we all feel free to look about? We have a few more expected. The maintenance book says it should not be set lower than 72 degrees. Really? Yes. Remember, Wilhelmina, you had me sit on the emergency planning committee, and it was decided that all AC units should not be set any lower. Is there any water here? Yes. Mara, can you also get some water? Sure. Hello, Wilhelmina Nui from the United States, World Buffet Committee Chair. Raji uh, Dantswaifi. Just call me Ricky. Yes, Ricky. From India. Nice to meet you. And you must be Henrietta Ojuwan. No. From Africa. No. Nelly, who really struck an arrow. Hi, I'm Isle Sawyer, in the United States, by way of the sunshine of the state of Florida. Louise Hilgard, London, England. <laughs> and back there is Michael from Egypt. And Sophie from France. <laughs> Louise. Hello, Ricky. I'm so sorry, Louise. Forgive her. Villanina has never heard the phrase, you can't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> yes, my apologies. I guess I did make a presumptuous assumption. Oh, no worries, love. If I got a bug up my ass every time someone mistook me for someone else, I'd be more anal retentive than a dog greeting his new friends at the pound. <laughs> <laughs> to do is ensure the dial is set to the appropriate temperature. Oh, I see. What you want it on? It's not what I want it on. It's supposed to be on 72 degrees. Yeah, well, I set it to 65. Tad, you've got it on uh, 65? That'll keep you cool. Tad, the emergency committee said in the building memo that temperatures should not be set lower than 72. Yeah, well, who's going to say anything? Tad, you're with the FBI for crying out so loud. So now, what's this all about? I said the beauty no, no. mammals. No, no, Who are all these people? Oh, this is the World Buffet Committee. The World Buffet Committee? Yes, this is Wilhelmina's great idea. Her solution to world conflict. A food festival where every country around the world will bring food and the Dignitaries and average folks alike will sit down and have a meal together. Wow, you mean like one gigantic potluck? Yes. <laughs> hey, that's pretty cool. Something bothering you, Mara? I'm wondering what Wilhelmina was concerned about. Wilhelmina? Is that Willie's name? Yeah. She wanted us to call her that because she... Ah, that's it! What? Ted, don't call her Willie because she's important now. So she wants to be referred by her formal name. Wilhelmina. Yes. I told the photographer Victor her name was Willie, so I need to correct it. Ah, uh, not a problem. You won't forget? Absolutely not. And if I see anyone calling her Willie, I'll help you out. I'll correct him. Thank you, Ted. You're such <laughs> a big help. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Oh, you must be Henrietta. Henrietta was your one, yes. From Africa. South Africa. Oh, South Africa. When will we ever get anything? Mara, Miss Ojuwan comes from South Africa. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just told Africa. No problem. Perfectly understandable. Well, welcome, Henrietta. Please, go in. Make yourself at home. Thank you.
Okay, let me help you, please, honey. Say, uh, what is your role here, anyway? Well, I'm Wilhelmina's personal assistant. Which means what, exactly? I'm surprised. But she's got you jumping around all over the place. Fetching water, turning down the air. I mean, are you her gopher? No! I... chop off her laundry sometimes, too. Mara. She's like an obedient little puppet dog. All she wants is attention. Her owner, Wilhelmina. I have a sense she's in two places all at the same time. One is in this project of a lifetime. Well, you know, for her that is. And the other is up in the clouds, you know, somewhere. <laughs> I mean, she's in over her head. Hello. Wilhelmina Nilly, chair of the World Buffet Committee. And you are? <laughs> Alexander Barakio Concepcion Harabar Smith Mina, <laughs> the third, at your service. <laughs> Not the Serbix, but the, uh, like a Serbis, Serbis. Like I am at your place, or I am at your mercy, or where the shit are you? I thought I was picking you up at seven. <laughs> See, maybe I should go start over again. Yes, I think I go. Okay, <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Uh, and you're from? Uh, Daily City, but you can call me Alex. <laughs> Daily City? You mean near San Francisco? Uh, yes, but actually, uh, I'm a citizen. <laughs> you see, my uncle's nephew, uh, who is not me, was a driver for the Navy president. <laughs> Actually, none of that has to do with me being a citizen of the Philippines. I just thought you'd like to know. Anyway, uh, I'm a citizen because my father was the U.S. ambassador to the United States. Uh, and ever since I was a little boy, I grew up there. <laughs> anyway, after his service, there's that word again. Anyway, after his service was completed, uh, I was already in my 20s, so I decided to stay. <laughs> I like Pego Ong, that is why. <laughs> We're expecting one more committee member, but I think we should get started. Hey, what's holding everything up? Can't we get on with it? I feel like the plane has landed and we're waiting in the aisles. Yes, this is like riding a bus in Mumbai. What is the problem up there? Wilhelmina. Lily. Solomon. Sataraka. It's an honor to be on your committee. Allow me to give you my card. I can see and sense your aura. It amazes me. Well, thanks. The last time that I felt this much energy was when I stuck my right forefinger into a light socket in order to transmit an electrical current to my left palm, which acted as a defibrillator as I attempted to restart the Prince of Tuvalu's heart, who had passed out while choking on a piece of dried squid. Sadly, no one was there to perform the Heimlich maneuver, which I myself have done seven times before never lost a soul. Solomon? He's got to be the biggest bullshitter on this side of shedding bull. That's sitting bull. Whatever. For me, Solomon was, how do you say, the icing on the iceberg. <laughs> Solomon just made our team complete, you know. We were ready to do great things. I mean, we were going to stage a food version of the Olympics. But instead of everybody coming together to watch a sporting event, they would come to taste the limitless variety of international cuisine. I thought it was a great idea. Wilhelmina was gonna bring the world together for food and drink, setting the stage for true peace. She and our committee were going to make the world buffet famous. Cream of the corn. Henrietta is such an optimist that if she were to be executed tomorrow morning, she would look forward to the fair meal tonight. <laughs> uh, the tip of the cake. 
Oh, but for the rest, well, they did not possess any intellectual or cultural value. I was the only one with any noble stock. You see, we were primarily made up of commoners, huh? Plain people who could not tell the difference between peanut butter and pate. This was Le Grand Committee to plan the Great World Buffet. <laughs> Give me a freaking break. And our leader? Oh, mon dieu. She reminded me of our Marie Antoinette. Totally clueless. In fact, I kept waiting for her to say, Okay. Let us eat cake. Victor, once you said it, come join us. Ted, Ted, you too. That's Wilhelmina. Are they on the committee? Oh, don't worry, Michael. We're all about inclusion. Everyday people coming to do something extraordinary. Before this is over, the whole world will be part of the committee. So hurry up, Victor. The world is waiting. You got it, Willie. Just one more thing. Uh, Victor. Yeah? We no longer call Willie Willie. Because she's got this prestigious title now, she doesn't want to go by her nickname. It's too informal, too small for her. She needs and wants to sound much more important. Wilhelmina's got a more formal ring to it. So it's Wilhelmina, OK? Copy that. Smile. All right, Beware America followers. I've got one that will really kick your watchdog instincts into overdrive. If you remember our last show, I told you about the United Nations secretive so-called food festival and how it is really a cover-up for the New World Order conspiracy to take over consciousness of people all over the world. Now, as proof of this, we have obtained these underground photographs that show this highly secretive committee. Malcolm, as you can see, these shots obviously must have been taken discreetly, and probably by a hidden camera. Mysterious? Definitely. Perhaps some Da Vinci Code symbolism inherent in these photographs. But here's the thing. I want to focus on who is on this committee. There are ten people, and its countries that they represent include the United States, China, the Philippines, France, South Africa, United Kingdom, Egypt, India. What about that? Hm? What strikes you about that, Jackie? It's obvious. This committee is made up of people from all over the world. They don't come from just one country. Jackie, we're not talking about organized crime. We're not talking about drug cartels, white slave traders, or even Islamic terrorists, man. We're talking about a worldwide takeover by the New World Order. I can't believe how right we are. And I know what some of you skeptics are saying right now. You're saying, Malcolm, or did it ever occur to you that for a committee planning a food festival that hopes to attract representatives from around the globe, that it would, in fact, be comprised of people from around the world? But that's the point. No, 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 man. They want you to think that. And while they've got us distracted, they're going to hit us where we're most vulnerable. Our stomachs, our taste buds. They'll poison the food and, and spike the water tables until we won't be able to distinguish between them and us. Because they will be us. Don't you understand? They will be us. So in conclusion, I am just so honored to be part of this team and I am raring to go. <laughs> All right, that wraps up our formal introductions. So now, talk about what the project can do. Okay, team, I would just like to say, with all the talent around this room, I think it's safe to say we're off to an amazing start. I mean, just look around us. Wilhelmina, 
I think we all know how great this event will be. Um, I mean, we've been here forever, and you've told us that about ten times. No, no, not ten times. No, um, not ten times. More like cinq. Uh, five or six, give or take two. <laughs> okay, five or six, but to me that's like ten, yeah. And I'm only using that as an example to say that maybe we can move on to the next topic on the agenda. Well, I know we've spent some time talking about us. No. We've been talking about how great this event will be, and that means we've been talking about you. Will you just let her talk? We've been letting her talk and talk, but most of us agree that we can move on to the next topic on the agenda before life as we know it is over. We, oui. I think it is uh, important that we discuss how we are going to coordinate informing every country in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, that is a very important aspect of this project, and I was thinking about that. I'm thinking we should put together a listserv of contacts in every country. You're talking about the email? <laughs> that is good. No. No, absolutely not. Uh, no, that's bad. What, wait, why? Email? Hmm. But email is uh, so impersonal. Huh? The invitations must be totally first class and they must be delivered in person. In person. What do you mean in person? Yes, what do you mean in person? We must visit every country, pay a visit to every country's leader and deliver the invitation in person. In person. Sophie, I have checked the web and there are currently 195 countries. You are suggesting that we visit everyone. Everyone? That is why we need to get started right away. Good idea. So you're saying we'll divide the countries up between us? Well, we could, huh? But, uh, well, I think it would be more beneficial to assign tasks to a specific committee members, you know? Some people could be in charge of creating the invitations. And, uh... Well, I could provide my expert help there. <laughs> I have a way with words. I, I dabble in poetry. But when it comes time to delivering the invitation, I personally could take on that assignment. Two hundred countries? <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Sophie, there is no physical way that you or any of us could visit every country in the world. Not suggesting that we visit every country in the world? <laughs> oh la la! I mean, who would want to go visit places like Jamaica, <laughs> uh, New Guinea, or Guyana? <laughs> <laughs> so what I think you're saying is the World Buffet will basically be the developed country's World Buffet. I think that uh, Ricky said it best, hmm? There is no way we can visit 195 countries. Ricky was saying logistically. He wasn't saying that we wouldn't be finding a way to communicate with them. Yes. Is anyone hearing what I'm saying? We're talking about email. Ricky, I think we know about email. I am not so sure. Sophie is talking about getting onto a plane and visiting all of these countries. Do you know how much time that will take? We don't have that kind of time. Do you know that if I compose an email right now, and I mean like right now, and I hit send, it will be received by the person I intended to go to almost immediately, anywhere in the world. Ricky is actually very technically savvy and quite ahead of his time. The only problem is he's living in a time warp where he's really back in like 1995. I mean, he thinks email is the answer to everything. Uh, Ricky. Ricky, I was wondering if I could uh, perhaps explain something to you. Yes, by all means. What is on your mind? Well, uh, I, I wasn't aware if you were understanding that email is not a new invention. No, no, Henrietta. No, I'm not saying I invented it. Uh, no. no. <laughs> I mean, I think that I'm fairly bright, but I don't think I can take credit for that. Uh, no, what I meant to say was that uh, email has been around for a long time. Yes. Uh -huh. I mean, it exploded on the scene. I know, it kind of grows on you. In the 1990s. Yes. So, it's not a new thing. Uh-huh. Uh, so, when you talk of what email can do, yes. I mean, I'm pretty sure most of us know what you're talking about. 
You do? Yeah, Ricky, all of us have email. Well, you know then! You know that in a flash, when I type on the computer and I hit the enter key, it is there! I think email is the way to go, Henrietta, and I'm so glad you understand! Thank you for telling me! Can I count on you for support? I spend maybe five hours a day on email. It's amazing. Yes, you'd be amazed at what I get. I probably get at least six vacation getaways every day. And these are not things that you can merely gloss over. Some of them go on for pages and pages. It takes a lot of time. There are emails for gift cards, solar eating panels, bookstore discounts, political statements, everything. I mean, I have seen everything. You cannot imagine the data. Listen. If we can't visit every country, we won't visit any country at all. Oh, to be ridiculous. You are not suggesting that countries like France, Spain, the United Kingdom would not be accorded a certain privilege? Listen, love, I come from the United Kingdom. From very old England, in fact. But I don't think we should get priority to my country over that of any other. Hmm. The point is moot anyway. We don't have time to fool around and getting the word out. We have to inform every country like right now. We have a lot to do and that is why we should switch out an email as soon as possible. Email? Oh my God. We are staging a worldwide prestigious event, huh? One that will be televised throughout the world. Really? Wilhelmina, we are going to be on TV? Well, you know. Well, of course. And that is why we must contact all the usual athletes of communication, huh? CNN. MS, NBC, The Tonight Show, The View, all of them in advance to make sure that there is a succession of coverage leading up to our day. Will it mean that we're going to be on The Tonight Show? Well, I think we have to anticipate that once the momentum starts going, a lot of the media will be picking up on the event. You know, that is so cool. <laughs> in fact, that is awesome. So who coordinates all of these? I could do that. Really? Uh, Renisha, how do you do that? Well, I'm sure the network has a contact number. Oh. You should call the 800 number first. Ooh. There's an 800 number? I'm just going to find no. it for us. Hey, I think we should you. focus on email yeah. first. Oh, email. 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 Who's that? Yeah. 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 That is what yeah. we are yeah. talking about. Tell them that you're operating by. Maybe we can look it up with a phone book. Records are out. It's really late. Please take that long. Come right here. 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 Okay, hey, maybe if we do the email. Who's that guy? Ted. Hey, hey, Ted. Hey, Ted. Who are you? Hey, man, I'm just helping out. Oh, then it would be faster. Don't you think if we email the Tonight Show? Got it. <laughs> You've reached the reservation line for the Tonight Show. Okay. Okay. It is. Okay. No way. Just me. Well, hold on. I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, please. We don't need information lines. Order to come later. We need quiet. We need quiet. Then maybe you should just shut up. That's enough from you, Habib. Habib? Wilhelmina. Now, let's not get... I'm sorry. Oh, okay? I didn't mean anything ethnic by that, okay? Okay. No problem. I, uh, ho. Oh. Hell, you say? Well, now, hold on. I'm now. gonna knock your book off! Bring it off! He didn't oh, mean it. Yes, he did. Okay, so he yes. did love, but I don't think he's worth all this aggravation, do you? Did you hear what he called me? I said I'm not from Idaho. I'm from Florida. No, no, he was really... Never mind, love. Let it go. Yes, she's right. Come on, folks. Let's calm down, okay? Michael, she didn't mean anything by it. I'm sorry, okay? Okay. Sorry. Now, I do believe that
there's been some good initial discourse, as they say. But all of our planning concepts must work from the perspective of what is doable, you know? And from that perspective, what is doable always has to be in relation to what resources we have. Now, with respect to resources, what I think is first and foremost of fundamental necessity is our knowledge of what is our budget for this event. And so, could you enlighten us on this topic, Wilhelmina? Uh, so, we're all waiting on Wilhelmina, yeah? I mean, we're like vultures trying to see if she's going to die. I mean, it's understandable. Louise from Merry Old England has just asked a very difficult question. Um, Wilhelmina, I'm just wondering if the committee has any bloody money. And Wilhelmina just sits there sounding like a beat up truck trying to make it up a steep hill in second gear. Well, it's a long story. I, um... Well, I mean, it's really very simple. Does the committee have any money? Yes or no? We... We have the authority to go out and find sponsors and, uh, do fundraisers. Oh! This is killing me. Fundraisers! We're going to stage this world event with no money. That is some plan, oh fearless leader. Wilhelmina! We have to find time to stage this event. How are we going to find time to raise money for it too? That's why we have a committee. Oh. Oh. No, no, listen, it's not that bad. What do you mean it's not that bad? With no budget? How are we going to publicize this event? Willie, have we paid for the site yet? We? We? Uh, Who's no. we? Wilhelmina. Well, not even on this committee, man. Paid for the site? We haven't gotten a site yet. What? Wilhelmina, well, where do you think this buffet is going to take place anyway? Well, that's, that's why, why we have a committee. Well, Sophie, <laughs> I don't think you can fly first class when you visit all of those developed countries. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie, would you please take my jacket off? Yes. Jacket off, Sophie. Jacket off, Sophie. Jacket off, Sophie. <laughs> wants to speak. Dude, are you a part of us? Why are we all here? Well, I don't know about you, but I was assigned to this committee. Well, me too. But what I'm saying is that we all thought that this was a great idea. I mean, this plan by Wilhelmina to, you know, gather all the nations and for a meal, we thought this was an idea whose time had come. And hey, so... Hey, uh, not to rain on your parade, you but... It is very rude to interrupt. I know. You know? Wow. You sound like you're proud of that. Hey, who the hell are you? Who the hell is this guy? Ted! All right, let's have some order. So, can I talk now? Knock yourself out. Knock myself out? Yes. What do you mean, knock myself out? Go ahead. Knock myself out? No, go ahead. Go ahead to what? Michael is the most immature person I've ever met. He knew full well what phrases like knock yourself out meant. But for some reason, he had this almost inherent need to aggravate Wilhelmina. Me and Wilhelmina. Yeah, we would get into these endless loop discourses. I would go, knock myself out and she would go yes you understand don't pull my leg and i would go oh pull my leg you're going to pull my leg i had a sneaking suspicion that michael knew every word i said but because he would always question me in front of the committee i had to remain calm i wasn't going to resort to his childish pranks that would only serve to lower myself to the pits of his juvenile mentality we had such a fun committee. <laughs> we had some challenges, yes, but all in all, I think we kind of had this 
chemistry, you know? <laughs> this was the most goofball committee I have ever been associated with. And we were led by Mrs. Goofball herself. There's a tendency to believe that leadership requires the leader to be forceful and always giving directions. Hot, sir. Hot. This is absolute hogwash. True leadership is evidence in whether you can persuade those under you to eventually achieve the group's objectives. People could think you a fool. But if the group was successful, then you would be a great leader. Michael is such a character. Uh, I believe that he just wants to lighten Wilhelmina up a little bit though, because uh, she's just a bit too steep. <laughs> it's not her fault altogether though. She is just having a hard time because people cannot understand what she is saying because of her accent. She is just like that little old Filipino woman in the park, shouting, chicken not bread, chicken not bread. No, she is not trying to sell you some kind of exotic pastry. She is just upset because her box terrier pee pee did not chew her balot and now she is shouting, chicken not bread, chicken not bread. Michael would do some of those childish things. Like he knows Wilhelmina loves her corn. And so he'll buy her a cup, you know, and he'll offer it to her. And Wilhelmina, she sees this as a friendly gesture from Michael. And so she smiles and says something like, gee, thanks, Michael. But before Wilhelmina can grab the cup, Michael will take it back, take a sip, and go, mm, this tastes pretty good. <laughs> I leave it for Wilhelmina, yeah? And she goes like, oh, what the hell, Michael? <laughs> I mean... Wilhelmina's looking at the cola in a quandary. I mean, she looks at it for so long. He has no respect for me. He'll go out of his way to irritate me. <laughs> now, if it were between him and me, it'd be one thing. But it affects the progress of the committee. I honestly believe that Michael just wanted to lighten Wilhelmina up just a little bit. You know to relieve all that pent-up pressure. It was bad enough that she fell from me sipping from her cup once, but it happened two more times. Oh, geez, thanks, Michael. And ah, it's intercepted. When Michael thought Wilhelmina would never fall for him sipping from the cola cup anymore, he went a step further. I emptied out the cola and replaced it with fresh beet juice. So, Michael gives Wilhelmina the cola, yeah? But Wilhelmina is wary. She's not going to fall for it again this time. So she says nothing. She just stares at Michael. I tell her, Wilhelmina, no, no, no joke. I brought your cola. Here, you can have it. I'll step away. Wilhelmina is still wary. <laughs> she waited until Michael was completely out of the room. When... Wilhelmina spit out the beet juice in a spray of maroonness. It covered the carpet. It took Mara hours to finally get the stick. <laughs> Childish. I think the bitch you still their fame. There will never be peace between the two. <laughs> I was just joking, man. But Wilhelmina, she can't take a joke. Later on, I kid around. I tell her, Wilhelmina, can I have some of your beet juice? And she tells me, I can go make love to myself. <laughs> People don't know this. But somewhere along the line of all the torment that Michael gave me, I decided I was going to kill him. <sighs> Those were good times. Good Girl. people. <laughs> We've talked so much, but all we've said is how great this idea is. I tell you, as much as I really don't like to admit this, I'm beginning to think like Habib over there. <laughs> Habib? I'm kidding! Don't look at me! I didn't say nothing! I'm, I'm kidding! 
Anyway, the fact of the matter is, we don't have any money, and we have to coordinate a worldwide event. So we know it's a great idea, but what is your point, Henrietta? What do we do? Solomon is like a group sage, you know. He just has this really worldly presence about him. I mean, you pick any problem or emotion that you're feeling, and he can relate to it, but in a way that you've never dreamed of. Do you know what I mean? Like, we were talking about the metaphor of a half-filled glass of water. You know that one, right? Do you look at the glass half full or half empty? Well, Solomon will say how selfish we all are to avoid looking at it not from the perspective of the glass, but from the point of view of the water. In other words, how would the water feel? Just a totally different perspective that changes everything. Deep. The dilemma that we're facing here is not unlike the daily struggle for existence that the Mongolians who live out in the steppes of Central Asia face every day. I spent an entire season with one nomadic family. They have no money. Their lives revolve around their livestock. Cattle, sheep, camels, yaks, and an eagle they call Somali men. As they migrate, the temperatures can dip as low as minus 40 degrees. It gets so cold, you piss icicles. To most of the world, this is a hard, almost unimaginable life. I mean, how many of us can live on just yak belt? I did. Or bear with the ignominy of knowing that anyone within a half mile radius can watch you taking a crap out on the open plains. I mean, they can pitch an entire year in just a couple of hours. So why the hell they can't construct a simple blind that you can squat behind is beyond me. But anyway, these people have adapted. And not only do they survive, but they flourish. And yes, they are even happy. So what's my freaking point, you ask? Well, like the Mongolians, we have no money. But does that mean that we cannot survive and thrive? ultimately not bring happiness to the world? <laughs> no, of course not. What we have our cattle. We have our sheep. We have our camels. We have our yaks. And of course, we have Somali Ben. You see, because we have each other, there is nothing that we cannot do. Solomon decided to join the committee because he lived for doing extraordinary things. With him, I just knew this idea of Willie's could not fail. I mean, Solomon has done things like surf a 50 foot wave, and climb Mount Everest. Stuff that you and I would only dream of. Someone once told me, maybe it was me, that Solomon was so mesmerizing, even grass would watch him grow. How do I know? Because he told me. No, no, these are all true things. It's on the internet. You know, I think that is a very good speech, but we're still back to where we were. So that is why I think email is the best look, way. Ricky, look, I personally think your email blasts are very good. Finally, someone sees But how... I can't be the only way. It should complement our marketing efforts and not be the only thing we do. You see, Ricky, unlike you, most of the world doesn't open up every single email they get. What? Are you all crazy? How do you know that you're not missing something important? Some great opportunity? Why, just last week, a man from Liberia said he needed a contact in Mumbai in which to deposit 68 million rupees. That is a million US dollars. And for just being his contact, he said I would get 20%. 20% for what? For just giving my bank account info. That is what you're all missing if you're not reading your email. Anyway, we don't have the budget to go traveling to each of these countries and personally inviting each ambassador. 
Although, Sophie, I do admit this is a wonderful idea, and I agree, if we could do this, we would. But seeing as we can't afford it, I say we do the next best thing, and we go visit them here. Folks, it's right in front of our eyes. I mean, we go and visit each ambassador in their offices. They're all in New York, for crying out loud. They're all right here. But still, Haji Method, that is still visiting almost 200 countries. And we got, what, 10, 12 of us on the committee? Gulevina, uh, is Fred and Four Eyes officially on the committee now? It's Ted. He called you Four Eyes, dude. What? But that's not my name. I like Victor, but as we used to say back in Kansas, he's got way too little grain in the silo, if you know what I mean. Michael, I will not put up with your rude, disrespecting behavior. Look, I'm sorry, Madam Chairman. Most of us were appointed to this committee. Those two just showed up. Well, we'll need their help anyway. I mean, with 12 of us, that's about 15 or so for each committee member. So you're saying we each take a group of countries and we go meet with every ambassador in their offices? Exactly. That's a great idea, Henrietta. I knew we could come up with a plan. Yes, and be sure to get the email address. Yes. See, that is a great idea. I will take all the GA countries. And we're gonna talk about how great this idea is. Shh. Okay, what else, Henrietta? Uh, well, we should set very specific objectives. So, uh, like, can they provide us with a contact person? Yes, that's very good. A person that will work with us. And be sure to get the email address. Yes, and they can join our team. Yes. No, no, but are you crazy? We're going to have 200 on our committee? We can't even manage 9, 10. Again, are they on the committee? Oh, that is a good point. Um, it's going to get too unwieldy. No, we don't necessarily have to have them on the committee. In fact, we don't need them on the committee. But what we do is create a network of contacts. A network of contacts. Yes. Yes, and be sure to get the email address. <laughs> yes. That's great. Go on, Henrietta. Well, we're all concerned about money. This is natural. So we go to each ambassador and we ask will Japan be able to contribute such and such? And then we go to uh, China and we tell the Chinese ambassador, um, can you donate such and such, much like how Japan has donated such and such. So you're playing each country against each other? In a way, yes. That is evil. Genius about evil. She is an evil genius! Well, <laughs> you better hit up the rich countries first. You don't want to come to my country, France, and say, uh, Senegal has pledged 30 goats. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think that will carry much weight with the French ambassador. <laughs> you know, Wilhelmina, this is going to work, huh? I have faith in my committee. So what you're saying, Henrietta, is that maybe each country will obviously supply their own resources. Yes. And when you say resources, you mean, like, they're going to give us money? Well, they might, but we won't know until we get out there. Sounds like a plan to me. Yes. Let's get started. Mara? Yes? We'll need a listing of every ambassador to the UN. I got it. I got the entire listing right on my phone. Oh, uh, Wilhelmina. Yeah? I noticed on the agenda that you were going to be covering committee assignments. That's agenda item number four, yeah, Agent Mulder. Well, what I can do for you We're is- We're still on number security, one. You know, I mean, wherever you stay, just you're gonna need security, like uh, video monitors to capture what's going on. Yes, that would be great, Ted. You got it. Wilhelmina, doesn't he have work to do? Good job, Henrietta. When Wilhelmina said to me, good job, Henrietta, I felt like my life had become complete. I mean, to pull us out of all the confusion and conflict that we were going through, I think that was quite possibly the best thing that I had done with my life. That and going to the Toad and Wet Sprocket concert. And the greatest part about all of this, it actually worked. 
In three very hectic weeks, we were able to visit every ambassador and obtain our listing of contact persons. We were doing great! Our sources have been tracking the nefarious World Buffet Committee. Just like we've been saying all along, they're up to something big. They've been having these secret meetings all over New York, meeting with every ambassador from every country that's represented in the UN. Now I ask you, are you telling me that they're talking about what they're going to bring to the party? In a pig's eye. <laughs> in a pig's eye. That's a, that's a good one, Jackie. How about this one? No turducken way. <laughs> it's tempting to be a realistic that that is the theme of everything, no? <laughs> Let's be honest. For your first ever world buffet, Willie, you want to hold it in a place that has class. It's one of the most famous places on earth, and people would be willing to go to it. You hold this thing in some uh, South American country. What would you do, huh? Rio? People won't feel safe. Buenos Aires? Why have hamburger when you can have filet mignon? So what city are we talking about? Paris, of course. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. But despite Sophie's high nose manner of justification, Paris was the um, best option to hold the world pay. I mean, Paris is beautiful. Mm. Uh, Paris has the best food in the world. People would like to go to there. Mm? And the greatest chefs in the world. Mm? <laughs> <laughs> so that's your recommendation? Paris was the no-brainer. And besides, we got uh, the rights to hold the world today and none other than the Paris Pet de Dudu de Salinis. Oh, mon Dieu. <laughs> Le Paris Pot de Versailles. The Paris. The largest exposition uh, hall in France. This man is not to be our spokesman, okay? <laughs> I think our committee was like the greatest committee ever born. I mean, we had the greatest leader in Wilhelmina, who is like this really brainy lady. <laughs> awesome! Alex is an incredibly upbeat person. I mean, he's upbeat to the point of nausea. Everything's awesome to him. Isn't today just awesome? Are you having an awesome day? That's an awesome idea. That's just so totally awesome. I mean, it wouldn't be so bad if he didn't just agree with everybody all the time. You know what I mean? I like Alex. He's always so complimentary. The other day, I filled a water pitcher. And the first thing everybody did was rush the water table. I stood there and watch the committee fill their cups as if they have been without water for 20 days or something. No! And they all passed me like I was invisible. Only Alex noticed me, and only Alex thanked me for what I did. He told me the water was awesome. Shopee had envisioned all this pageantry that would accompany the day and the night, like, um. Uh, parades, university lectures, films by uh, Jeannie Fr uh, Frankie, mm, Jean Renori, uh, 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 Frankie Trappent. Francais Tu Veux. And she had envisioned um, all the countries having their own section of decorations. Uh, it was going to be awesome. The end. For every section, there would be an entrance. Huh? So, for example, France, because we have the José Lézé, we would naturally design our entrance so that people would stroll down the José Lézé into our area. That can't be. Pourquoi it can't be? It will be. Sophie. There is only so much space in and around the center and we have potentially 200 countries attending. There is plenty of space. 
There is no space, Sophie. If you divide 100,000 square feet of space by 200 countries or 195 to be exact, that comes out to 512 square feet for each country. There is just not enough room to design this place such as the Champalisi. Chanze et lezé. Champalisi. That is what I said. My <clears throat> child, if you had the brain and you spent more time doing your research rather than responding to emails, you would know that the Porte de Versailles de Paris has close to 2.5 million square feet of exposition space. That is true, but if you bothered to look down onto your desk every once in a while, instead of keeping your nose up in the clouds, you would have read the report by Louise and I that said all the Paris Visitor and Convention Bureau can allow us to use is 100,000 square feet. Somebody did not get the memo. <laughs> she got the memo. She just did not read it. But this is ridiculous. We cannot hold a worldwide event on 100,000 square feet. We need to find some place else. There is no place else. Sophie, we were lucky to get this. And thanks to you, we were able to talk to the center and get their approval, but they were clear. All we have is 100,000 square feet. Well, that's not bad. That gives us plenty of space for our booths, right? Excuse moi. Booths? This is not a job fair for the masses. This is a once-in-a-lifetime event. Kings, queens, prime ministers, celebrities, they will all be there. And what will we do, huh? Serve food on paper plates to taste like you Americans do at your Costco? Hey, 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 hold on there. No, Ida. Sophie, it's all that we have to work with, but it can still work. I think the solution is obvious. We don't have 200 booths. What do you mean? Oh, my do. You are not suggesting that every country has to have a booth, do you? Well, yes. Isn't that the idea? Oh, this is ridiculous. You are not going to give the same amount of space to uh, uh, Guatemala as you would a country like France, huh? For God's sakes. That is so elitist, Sophie. Why not? This is supposed to recognize all countries, right? Right, Wilhelmina? That's right. Committee members, I think we must be again realistic. Hmm. We are not going to give the same amount of space to every country. That would be impractical and logistically suicidal. I mean, can you imagine the lines in front of the booth for France with its crepes and this is what? Well, countries like Venezuela have uh, hardly anybody because they might be cooking up a copper barrara or something. Oh. Okay, listen, let's settle down. Now, I think we can all see that this is causing a lively debate. And I think it's important that we try to understand as best as possible where the opposing points are coming from. Is he chairing the committee now? First, there are those who believe that equality is most important. And this is a position best espoused by Ricky, who uses the mathematical approach and says that each country should get 500 square feet of booth space. 512 square feet. 512, I stand corrected. And then there are those who feel that equality is not the objective, but instead each country should be represented according to the size or prestige. This is a position best espoused by Sophie, am I right? Amazingly enough, I think he's got it. Thank you. Well, I might add that the polaric formation of concepts is not unlike what we have in our American legislative system. Polaric. But we have a House of Representatives made up of representatives on a pro rata number according to the population of each state. And then we have a U.S. Senate made up of two senators from each state. Now. The way I see it, there are those amongst us who believe in a representative form of government and those amongst us who believe in a senatorial form of government. What the hell are you saying, man? Who the hell appointed you to this committee? No, no, Ted is right. We've got two basic points of view. I say that we take a vote. A vote? 
Vote on what? Well, Sophie says it is always said that certain countries should be given preferences. I say that all countries should be treated the same and that goes for all facets of this entire event. And I'm with Louise. Now, of course, the two peas in a pod. <laughs> so why don't we make it official, hmm? How should this committee run the food booths for the world building? Should all countries be given equal space? Or should certain countries be given larger spaces? Well, Amina, I move that we take a vote. All right. All those for equal space for every country, raise your hands. Wait a minute, this is not right. Ted cannot vote. I agree. He is not officially a member of this committee. Uh, Victor and Mara too. Mara only knows how to get ice water and Victor doesn't know anything at all. Michael, that is so rude. Hey, Ted Mary and me, we help visit all them ambassadors. So we paid our dues. You can't expect us to bring in the bacon and then not let us eat. Hey, that was great what you said. Yeah, what I say? That bacon line, that was good. Yeah, you like bacon too? No, Michael, I said from the start we're inclusive. So they are on the committee. All right. All those for giving preference to certain countries, raise your hands. Hi, dog. Oh, I'm sorry, Louise. I, I hate to say this, but I have to agree with Miss Hot to Todd over there on this one. Well, Amina, Alex didn't vote. You know, both sides have merit, yes? Alex, if you can't decide, just abstain. He can't abstain. He has to vote. And by the mere fact that he didn't vote for the first option, it means that he has to vote for the second option. That's not true. If he wants to vote for our side, we can vote again. That's bullshit. What is this, Florida? Hey, hey! Alex has to vote. So come on, you wishy-washy, ameliorating hermaphrodite. What the prick? Are you aware, sir, that I am the rubber tree, and that you are the glue stick, and that everything you say to me bounces off and sticks to your... Hey, cast your vote! Ah, there. That big sink! Oh, Alex. It will haunt me for the rest of my life. One, two, three, four, five. What was the earlier count? It was five. Oh. <sighs> oh, mon dieu. That means we're tied. Solomon. Which side do you vote for? It came down to Solomon, and everybody knew that a better man couldn't make the final decision. It was so dramatic. <laughs> it was like one of those great sports movies. You know, this reminds me of the time that I performed a C-section in a small village called Oboko in Nigeria. Can you just vote, man? Shh. The country was in the midst of civil war, and rebels were massacring innocent people everywhere, and now they were inside our camp. As our forces fought them off, one rebel managed to get through. The nurses' screams alerted me that at any moment we'd all be under a hail of bullets. And sure enough, our guard was quickly shot down. What to do? The woman's belly split. If I stop now, I risk losing the baby and possibly killing the mother. In an instant, I reach in, pull the tyke out, and toss the baby to a BB, my assistant. I then drop and roll to the guard's rifle, pick it up, and as the rebel enters, I cut him down with my AK-47. So in effect, when faced with two tasks that competed for my soul, I chose to do both and 
one full swoop. We learn from our experiences. It worked then, so it will work again. I vote for both sides. How can you vote for both sides? It was so profound. You see, had Solomon merely abstained, it would have said nothing. But no, Solomon saw the merits of both sides and he voted for both. Only Solomon could come up with that. He punted. I did not know that you could vote for both sides. That was awesome. <laughs> so what does that mean? It means we're still tied. We never will solve this. No, it doesn't. We're tied, so it goes to the chairperson to break that tie. Well, Lamina. So which way should we go with Lamina? Well, I can see both sides. Oh, oh. oh. oh come on, Wilhelmina. One Solomon is enough. Whose side are you on? Are you with them, those bleeding hearts? are going to turn your world buffet into a love fest of disorganization? Or are you with us, Sophie's Choice, where money, power, and privilege is going to stomp out all measures of democracy? <laughs> Actually, I'm for neither. No. Oh. Right on, Wilhelmina. I love it. She says nothing. You love nothing? What the hell are you talking about, Wilhelmina? Look, I've been giving this a lot of thought. But you see, what we're staging here is the World Buffet. And I initially came up with this title because, well, when you go to a buffet, what do you get? Let me take a crack at this. Michael? Food. Of course. But more than that. Oh, mon dieu. We have no time. Wilhelmina. No, let's just see where this is going. Come on. Ted? Good food. No. <laughs> I mean, yes. But no. More than that. More than that? Oh, I got it. Lots of food. Of <laughs> 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 Just tell us, Wilhelmina. No. You get different kinds of food. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Listen to me. When you go to a buffet, do you see all main dishes? No. Do you see just salads? Hmm? No. Do you see just desserts? <gasps> there are desserts. Yes, but do you see only desserts? Ah. Good question. Um, Wilhelmina, hello? What's your freaking point? Please tell us. Michael, <laughs> the whole intent of staging the World Buffet was that here was a way in which all the countries could work as a team. If we just tell every country to bring what they want, what's going to happen? We're going to have a ton of food, yes, but they're all gonna be culinary islands quite apart from one another. Just like if we gave everybody a separate booth. What is your point? My point is that if we don't set some guidelines, all we're going to be doing is creating an atmosphere of competition. I mean, think about it. What's wrong with the spirit of the Olympic games? Huh? I mean, we've got NBA stars for crying out loud. Millionaires playing just for the good sportsmanship? No! Out to rule the basketball world. I mean, if they don't win the gold, we look upon it as a failure. Who cares about the spirit of good sportsmanship, right? It's win, win, win! At all costs! Wilhelmina, what is your point? cannot just let every country bring what they want to bring. If we do that, a world buffet will turn into an international competition of who makes the fast food. No. What we want is a buffet line with one food item from every country. 
we ask that each country bring the one food they're most known for as a symbol of world unity. Because you see, in this way, everyone will come and dine on one menu that has been designed by the world. And it won't be about who has the best food, but how everyone contributed something to the table. We'll have some countries bring appetizers, others will bring entrees, others will bring desserts. Some countries will bring drinks. That is awesome. <laughs> but who is going to bring the plates? This is so high maintenance. It was a wonderful, exciting time to be on the committee. Wilhelmina's idea to have one long buffet of international cuisine made so much sense. We could see it. One line that might stretch for 50 yards. But if one were to take one's plate and proceed down the line, by the end of your visit to the buffet table, you would have traveled the world. Heads up, fellow watchdogs. Malcolm Whiteman here again. We've been following the antics of the New World Order's World Buffet. And what did we tell you? It was only a matter of time before they would start imposing their will on these countries who have the backbones of jellyfish. Easy, Malcolm. We need you. I know, but Jackie, if you saw a little child reaching for a butterfly outside an open window 16 floors up, would you stay quiet? No way. If you saw a blind man walking against a red light at a busy intersection, would you just drive by without doing anything? Absolutely not. And if you saw an idiot smoking a cigarette, inhaling carcinogens and polluting the air, would you just do nothing? Or would you go find a fire extinguisher, creep up on him and blast him in his suck hole? Okay, maybe that one's a little out there. Just a little. Well, I said the best food in America comes from New Orleans. There's some agreement there, I'm sure. And do you know why? Because the cuisine is based in French cooking. <laughs> no, 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 it is. It's true. The greatest gift Napoleon ever gave America wasn't the Louisiana purchase, but the food that came with it. <laughs> but because of its French heritage, that's why we shouldn't go with food from New Orleans. <laughs> as good as it might be. I'd go for Boston clam chowder. Mm. Best clams in the world. Mmm. I'd say so, no debating that. <laughs> but I don't know, is the US ultimately known for seafood? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Ida? Well, I think it's obvious. Stay. When you think of America, you think of the West. The Old West. And the Old West was defined by its feet. Stay, no question. Well, Lamina, you're sitting there all quiet. What are you thinking? You know what I think is the food most representative of the United States? What? Fast food! Oh! That is right. You take a ton of big mix to Paris representing American cuisine and you'll have such an uproar! No, not big mix. Fried chicken. America eats more chicken than any other country in the world. That is right. <laughs> you don't know that. You don't know that I don't know what? Fried chicken? You're not saying... I am. American fried chicken. AFC? <laughs> yes! <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't go for my steak or Michael's Boston clam chowder, but you'll go for an AFC? Is that what you're saying? Yeah! You know, I totally agree. American food is so uninspired. You might as well order to take out. <laughs> Let me explain. Oh, please do, I want to hear this. <laughs> we want the World oh. Buffet to be an experience. It's not just about the food. It's about what the food represents. It's not important that our food isn't the best tasting in the buffet line, but it should stand for what America represents. And whether we like it or not, we're known for fast food. And in fact, many international travelers that I've known even appreciate it. Now, Mina, trust me on this. You put American fried chicken onto that buffet while representing all of the United States, and this committee will be answering complaint letters from now until the end of time. 
Alex. The AFC. Are we talking about um, original formula or uh, the extra brittle? <laughs> Wilhelmina <laughs> <laughs> lost a lot of probability due to the AFC effect. Michael said it didn't matter really because Wilhelmina didn't have any credibility to begin with. But soon it became evident that Wilhelmina was no longer the leader of the committee. I think all security should report to their own security head. It's protocol, you know? <laughs> Times. Protocol is important, but not more important than security. The Paris police force says they'll take the lead. <laughs> Every time Wilhelmina had an idea, someone would take an opposite stand and gain the favor of the rest of the committee. I was thinking that today we could go over the menu again and see what we got. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing that we need to do, we still need to settle on an opening program, and we need to decide on a keynote chef to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be no menu's got to wait. <laughs> eventually became the subject of ridicule. When you set up the travel arrangements, I think shuttle buses should be designated by countries. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, that is a great idea, but maybe it would be better to designate the shuttles by their destination. <laughs> World buffet. <laughs> disrespect the committee was showing me was entirely unprofessional. They were purposely playing games to annoy me. The lady with the better pipes gets oh, Zippo. Oh. <laughs> Our brother who art in heaven praying for an inside straight gets oh, he is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. King High. Gets a lot of doo doo. Oh. <laughs> hey, can I play? <laughs> it is important that every major area has its access route. Now, Sophie is not going to get her Champalisi replica, but I think she would be pleased to know that France will be inside of the section reserved for the European continent. <gasps> Are there going to be enough plates? Ooh, what about the plates? The plates, the plates! Wilhelmina! What the hell are you doing? Ricky is one of those guys that if an elephant were in the room, not only would he acknowledge that it was there, but he would point out the location and the length of the elephant's penis. The woman is swatting at imaginary flies. She's obviously becoming unhinged. What am I to do? Ignore what is unavoidably becoming a serious issue? I mean, our leader is having daily hallucinations. It was a troubling time. It was all diversionary. I had lost all control in the respect of my committee. I tell Sophie that with the choice of moussakas, a great dish of fried eggplant and potato slices, one of the great Greek dishes, no doubt, was a tremendously intuitive pick. 
I found it curious that there'll be no olives from the one country that predominantly produces the most olive oil in the world. A legitimate point, wouldn't you agree? She says, I'll show you where you can stuff your olives. I cordially, cordially mind you, suggest to Louise that we should set a schedule for the delivery of the food into the exhibition hall. And she says, quite condescending I might add, Wilhelmina, don't worry about it. Why don't you just go do what you do best? And because I'm not quite sure what she means by that, I smile and ask her, politely mind you, Louise, what do you mean by that? And she looks back at me and chuckles. One of those, don't pay any attention to that type of chuckle. <laughs> One of those, I don't have any time for you right now. Why don't you take this cookie and go away, little girl, type of chuckle. <laughs> One of those, you blooming idiot. Can't you see I'm working, type of chuckle. Well, let me tell you something. If it weren't for me, you wouldn't even have a task to pay attention to that you would be so annoyed at my suggesting, just suggesting, mind you, that food be brought in on a schedule. Wilhelmina, poor Wilhelmina. Wilhelmina was under such tremendous stress. And that stress was becoming too much for her to bear. But for Pricky to come out and tell everybody about her perceived afflictions was I thought was overreacting. Overreacting? The woman is chasing invisible flies. Yes. But I always believe in giving the benefit of the doubt. If Wilhelmina claims that she was seeing flies, who amongst us could legitimately claim that she was not seeing flies? I mean, when you cook, you don't just throw every ingredient into the pot at the same time. You put the oil in first, let your onions drop into simmer, the onions, and then you throw in your meats, and then the sauce, add your spices, you do that, there's an order, there's an order to the order of food, there's an order to the order of the universe, <laughs> and so, I came up with the notion if I feign going crazy, notice what I said, I said, Fame, which means to impersonate, to imitate, to simulate, to fake. Yes, fake, the fact that I was seeing flies. She was seeing flies. It didn't matter whether she was faking seeing flies or not. Say she was faking seeing flies. What, that's supposed to make us feel better? Like. We're supposed to feel happy now that someone's faking being crazy in order for us to listen to her? But they did listen to me. Once I started chasing flies, people began to pay attention to me. When I suggested to Louise that we should have a schedule for the delivery of the food, I think that's a wonderful idea. And when I told Sophie that wouldn't a dish from Greece have olives in it? Oh, wait, wait a minute. In fact, we have asked Greece to bring a variety of their very best. For example, I only and greens immersed in extra virgin olive oil. Sound good? Yes. Ida? You can have any fast food you want. AFC? Bring on the gym. Yes, that's more like it. I was happy that the committee was listening to Wilhelmina again. Personally, I felt it was the right way to go. I mean, it was her original idea to stage the buffet in the first place. And besides, however it was to go, we should have abided by her visionary leadership. I had deferred to too many people over the course of these many months together. And it was apparent this was not a good thing. I decided this was my committee and I had every right to exude influence over it. 
And by Joe, I was going to do just that. Wilhelmina was our captain again. Yes, she was our Ahab. And the world buffet turned into her Moby Dick. <laughs> she ordered people around, she was rude and obstinate. And when people even suggested an alternate point of view, she reverted to her secret weapon. So let's go over our list of appetizers. Oh, mon dieu. Oh, we've been over this uh, how many times? Let's go over it again. All right. I wanted kimchi to be on the menu. I don't see it. Who was responsible for contacting the Koreans? Oh, that was me, Wilhelmina. Oh, why don't we see any kimchi? Well, frankly, the Korean ambassador thought it was rather, um, stereotypical that they'd be asked to bring that particular dish. What? What are you talking about? It's their national dish, isn't it? It is, yes. The Wilhelmina, but uh, sometimes it is brown the bomb for others to refer to the delicacy. I don't follow you. Well, you see, uh, sometimes if we are in a pickle <laughs> or a deep pigs, we say that we are in a deep kimchi. Or like we are now. Did I ask for your opinion? So? Well, it's just the... Wilhelmina, what the Koreans want to bring in addition to the kimchi is some kalbi meat, meat jun... Bibam No! Oh, no! <laughs> That's not what we want. We are not having separate food cities. We're having one buffet line filled with food from all the countries, of which each country will bring one food item, okay? Wilhelmina, you've got to be practical. I am being practical. Without guidelines, without rules, the buffet will turn into just... One big competition! Wilhelmina! Now, Wilhelmina, I know you're just doing that. Doing what? You're making those twitching movements because you actually want sympathy from the rest of us. I don't want sympathy, I just want people to do what I say! But that's the point! Whatever you said, you aren't getting your way, you're going to these tantrums! What oh, tantrums? Oh my god! We need a doctor! Oh, oh. You know? This looks like the time the wheels to my ATV got stuck in sand and kept spinning out in the last mile of the Baja 2000. Mm. Only sideways. No, 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 no. Chicken nut bread! Chicken nut bread! Wilhelmina, are you okay? Yes, why? Wilhelmina, I think you need serious help. No, I don't need help. I'm... Yes, I do need help. From all of you. Now, are we getting the Koreans to bring their kimchi or what? If you want it, you got it. Thank you. This is extortion. Shut, Shut up. up! Well, anybody else want to take a crack? Don't look at me. I'm good. Well, Amina, while your idea to tell each country what to bring had its merits, uh, not all countries have responded well. Really? What do you mean? Well, for example, when you suggested the United States bring AFC chicken... Yes, a wonderful choice. Well, I think the only person who was happy about that was the general. And he's dead. Bill, me and a Congress even passed a resolution saying that ribeye steak be the official food of the United States. Well, it loses the franchise experience. But if Congress, Congress wants that, well, what can we say, huh? Only thing, Wilhelmina, Argentina's preparing to go to war over this. When we told them the United States is bringing the steak, they blew a gasket. They only eat steak in Argentina, Wilhelmina. Uh, they don't have anything else. And that is not the only matter of contention. The English are upset because all we have asked them to bring is their bloody tea. And the Irish are upset that they were asked to bring Guinness. What are you talking about? Guinness beer is famous around the world. Anyone who's ever been to an Irish pub knows that but it's the fact that they're only asked to bring Guinness, in fact, tons of Guinness, that they too feel they're being stereotyped as the drunken Irish. Even though that may be true. Hmm? Mm hmm So do you see, Wilhelmina? The Irish want to bring whiskey? No! It is just too high maintenance to impose all of these rules onto an entire planet. Yes, Wilhelmina. It's tough enough to bring everyone together. Incredibly tough if you're telling everyone exactly what to do. For the first time, anyway, couldn't we just let the people bring what they want to bring? Well, this is what I think. We never knew 
whether Wilhelmina used her fits and delusions to get her own way, or she had truly become deranged. But uh, we could not test her. Whatever she wanted, we had to follow. And that meant the beginning of the end. She told the Chinese to bring the dim sum, which they protested because they felt that their Peking duck was one of the world's greatest dishes. And then she started making demands that were totally offensive. She asked Spain to bring bull's testicles since bullfighting was its national sport. She told Norway to bring whale meat since they were one of the few countries who still hunted whales. When asked what in the world she was thinking, she said, Who else would bring whale meat? Oh, mon dieu. She made incredible political boo-boos. Well, she met a fat lady told Catalonia that they could bring their own dish, and this incited another separatist debate with Spain. She did the same thing with Taiwan without consulting the Chinese ambassador. Once the diplomatic snafu was made, it was as if the dam burst. The Australian Aborigines wanted to be recognized as a separate nation unto its own, to which Wilhelmina said, Sure. Hearing that the Aborigines were given independent recognition spurred the entire Native American movement to join in. The Sioux wanted to be recognized as a separate group. So to the Apache, the Shoshone, right on down the line. Aleut in Alaska, the Kurds in Iraq. Okinawans wanted to be apart from Japan and Quebec wanted to distance themselves from both Canada and France. Soon all the states in America wanted their own representation. They went from becoming the esteemed chair of the most noble idea the United Nations had produced in years to simply willy-nilly. The woman who at first couldn't make a decision, who became the dictator who wouldn't change her mind. We could all see that things were headed for a disaster. But what could we do? The fact was, we could do nothing. Basically, the train had left the bar and it was too late to close the doors because all of the alligators were now in the swamp. In the end, it came upon the Secretary General to issue an official memorandum canceling this embarrassing activity, which had caused more divisiveness than any international event in recent memory. Okay, Jackie, I don't know if it's my imagination or is the World Buffet imploding in front of our very eyes. It has imploded, Malcolm. It's official. The UN has halted the project. Oh yeah. Willy Nilly is the new Milly Vanilli. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. The World Buffet. Here today, gone to Mali. Yes. And here to talk about what all happened is a very special guest. A man who is actually on the committee. Yes. Our man on the inside, Mr. Michael Asadi. Michael, welcome. Thank you for having me on the show. Let's just cut to the chase. What happened, man? How could the supposed most amazing idea ever go nowhere so fast? What was the problem? Well, it began. <laughs> it's about leadership, or the lack thereof. <laughs> we were led by a person that- Willy-nilly. Well, I, I don't want to mention names, but we were led by a leader who couldn't lead. And the committee itself had some of the, how can I say this, some of the most goofball people you can ever imagine. So, oh yeah, yes. well, like who? I don't want to mention any names, but... Well, we got them all from you anyway, Michael. There was Mara from China, who was also Willie's personal assistant, Ida from Florida, Louise from England, Alex from the Philippines, Ricky from India, Henrietta from South Africa, Sophie from France, and Solomon... We're not sure where he's from. From Mars. <laughs> um, and Victor, our photographer, who doesn't know that the subject needs to be inside the frame. And Ted from the FBI, who wouldn't be able to spot his own car in his own garage. <laughs> that sounds like the whole kitten caboodle there. Well, what about you, Michael? Just between us. What are you saying? Everybody else there was goofballs and you're saying that you were our Einstein? Well, you see, how do I put this? I was outvoted on 
practically everything that the committee decided to do. I mean, I could have done what others did. I could have fell in line like our dictatorial leader wanted us to do, but I just couldn't. I was the lone descending vote. To be honest, I just, I'm not capable of telling a lie. And from the beginning, I, I knew that the project was going nowhere. You know, I think that your dissension contributed to why the UN saw fit to cancel the world with they, because they, like you, saw this headed for even greater disaster. Yes. What people think is what they believe. But I had to listen to my conscience. And if I did the UN and the world at large any good, I just want to express my gratitude to them. Well, we thank you, Michael. We think that you might have saved us all from a new world order takeover. Thank you, you're much too kind. No. It makes me so proud to know that there are people out there like you, Michael. People who won't just buy into the system, but who will stand up to the machine. It's all right, Malcolm. Because of you, people like Michael do the right thing. I know. That's why we do this, Jackie. That's why we do this. All right, that's it for today's show. Now that the World Buffet has gone the way of flip phones, fondue pots, and disco fever, we can now move on to more pressing matters. Join us for our next show when we ask the question, are aliens stealing energy from us by collecting methane in our atmosphere in preparation for an all-out invasion? We'll have an expert here to talk to us about how cow farts could be contributing to the end of the world as we know it. Until then... Subscribe. Bye. It was sad to say goodbye to everybody, but it was especially sad to bid farewell to Wilhelmina. We all knew she would be the most devastated of all. So to cheer her up, we all decided to give her a memento that she could remember us by. It didn't have to be food related, although some of us did. For example, Louise brought a can of English tea. Ida brought an orange from Florida. The rest of us brought inanimate objects that represented who we were. Like I brought a flower. Alex brought one too. Ricky brought, what else? Sophie brought a great symbol of herself. So did Mara. And Victor brought Wilhelmina the headshot he had promised her. I got you this gift card to AFC. It's worth five bucks. It can be used at practically any location. Thanks, Ted. Wilhelmina, contrary to the others, I chose not to give you a tangible gift. Instead, I want to give you what I think is the most important treasure of all, perspective. You see, right now, you feel as low as a 59 Chevrolet Impala cruising down Whittier Boulevard in East LA. And that is understandable. But let me assure you, that this is not the end of the world. And in time, you will realize that these aren't hard times at all. In fact, this is the dawn of the new beginning. Hard times, end of the world, not even close. Let me tell you about what is tough, but almost ended the world as we know it. I was working on an offshore oil rig where we got word of the asteroid, a planet killer the size of Texas. By the time they picked it up, we only had 18 days before it would hit Earth and exterminate every living thing. Not even bacteria would survive. Our only chance? Fly us up there, drill a hole in the asteroid, drop in a nuclear bomb, and that's we would- That's just a movie. What? Yes. They fly up and the government tries to blow them up too because they cannot reach the depth of 700 feet for the bomb. But they eventually succeed only to have something happen to the trigger device. So the headman stays behind to manually detonate. Yeah, and he does, and it blows into two pieces. And one of them crashes into the ocean and causes a 3,000 foot tsunami. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then the boy and the girl and the baby uh, ride up the mountain on the butt butt bike just before they no, reach. No, 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 no. That was the one that came out first. This one is better. I don't know, I like the first one. Special effects was better. 
How can you say that? So you heard of us, huh? Wilhelmina, perspective. Always remember that. Perspective. Stay moist, my friends. What is there to say? I took a perfectly amazing concept. And contrary to what I promised my boss, I managed to totally screw it up. Really? We were a committee. We, we all had a part in it. It just wasn't to be. That is so sweet, Sophie. No wonder. That wasn't that bad. <laughs> oh, Michael. Oh, who cares? <laughs> Isn't that just like him not to show up? He actually did stop by. He came by early because he said he had to be somewhere else later. He did? And uh, how did that go? Of course. He was his usual self. So I think you can imagine what that was like. Oh, Michael. What? The Queen of Cola is giving me her holy grail? <laughs> but I didn't let it bother me. And in fact, as a symbol of my moving on with my new life, I even gave him my cola. Ooh, what? Oh. That's amazing, Wilhelmina. In the end, I decided he wasn't worth it. I wasn't going to let him bring me down ever again. He's not breathing. What? No. This was a trap. Jackie, we've been set up. They're going to blame us. No. What do you mean, us, white men? 